station on Space to Ground. Well, welcome to Space to Ground, I'm Isidro Reyna. This week we celebrate science aboard the International Space Station. NASA's Stratospheric Aerosol and Gas Experiment 3, or SAGE-3, celebrated its fourth anniversary of its first light measurements aboard the International Space Station. This experiment is the most recent in a series of SAGE instruments that have measured stratospheric gases and aerosols from space. Launched this station in February of 2017, SAGE-3 is helping scientists monitor the recovery of ozone, resulting from the reduction in emissions of ozone-depleting substances. SAGE-3 has also measured the intrusion of aerosols in the stratosphere from intense wildfires in Australia and California and from volcanic eruptions. The SAGE family of instruments started in 1979 and is one of NASA's longest-running Earth-observing programs. Data from SAGE-2 helped confirm human-driven changes to the ozone layer, which contributed to the 1987 Montreal Protocol that banned some of the most destructive industrially produced ozone-depleting chemicals. NASA's SpaceX Crew-1 astronauts aboard the space station will mark another first for commercial spaceflight on April the 5th, when the four astronauts will relocate the Crew Dragon spacecraft. NASA astronauts Michael Hopkins, Victor Glover, and Shannon Walker, along with JAXA astronaut Soichi Noguchi, will undock Crew Dragon resilience from the forward port of the station's Harmony module and dock to the space-facing port. This will be the first port relocation of a Crew Dragon spacecraft. The relocation will free Harmony's forward port for the docking of the Crew Dragon Endeavor, set to carry four crew members to the station on NASA's SpaceX Crew-2 mission. The Crew-1 astronauts are scheduled to depart to the station and return to Earth on April the 28th, leaving the space-facing port of Harmony vacant. A Dragon cargo spacecraft carrying several tons of supplies and the first set of the new solar arrays for the space station is scheduled to launch this summer and requires the space facing port position to enable robotic extraction of the arrays from Dragon's trunk using Canadarm2. Live coverage will begin at 6 a.m. Eastern on NASA television, the NASA app, and the agency's website. Space to ground. Station, this is Dr. Francis Collins with National Institutes of Health. How do you hear me? During a recent in-flight conversation, NASA astronaut and microbiologist Dr. Kate Rubens had an opportunity to talk to one of her science heroes, Dr. Francis Collins, director of the National Institutes of Health. You're doing great work up there, and we're all fascinated uh, by the way in which uh, science is being conducted right there on the International Space Station. And I hope people are watching this, uh, dreaming a little bit themselves, uh, could imagine doing something like this. It's a path forward. This is the best time, tell me if you agree, to be a scientist in the history of the planet, because so many things are possible. Not only is this an exciting general time uh, in the space station history, I'm having fun actually today, right now. Uh, there's just, there's a lot going on up here. And I really do think that science is an incredible career, whether you're doing it in space or on the ground. If people are interested in this, the pleasure and, and the gratification of being a scientist every day, it's, it's truly amazing to get up and discover new things. That's Space to Ground this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Subscribe for more space.